Welcome back to the Goat Worn Oncast. We're back at it again with the salt spreading, the farb of the week. And this week, we're going to be making up for the lack of Q&A sessions. Um, we've, we've maybe done one or two questions at a time in the last few um, episodes. And I intended, always intended that it'd be a bit more than that. So we're going to dedicate a bit more of this episode to it. So joining me for that, we've got a guest from of Norvik. Uh, we have Just Eastern Things, The Shire Reeve, and a special guest in the form of one of my Patreon supporters, Mr. Toby Domes. Uh, so we're going to be chatting to him in a bit, asking him about, I don't know, really, really awfully personal questions, if we can help it. Um, let's make him feel like a little awkward on screen and uh, see how that goes. If you are listening to this particular episode, stay to the end. There may, be, may or may not be something a little special. So, just Easton, um, we <laughs> before we started recording, we heard the release of a gas canister. Um, could you tell us a little bit about why that happened? Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've decided to get into a little bit of airsoft as some of my military friends have uh, decided to drag me along. I wanted to get want me to get involved, so I purchased a couple of gas operated uh, blowback weapons to play with and. Um, yeah, I fucked it, I think is uh, what I'm going to go with. I pulled the magazine out and a gas canister exploded in my face. And I think there was a little scream. Um, a little. It's, it's all right. It'll just have been the uh, the tap-off port where the hammer hits it. Mate, the bloody bottom of the magazine blew off. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, then. Maybe not. Um, you done fucked that up. Yeah, no, that yeah. is... Yeah, that's concerning. Uh, to be fair, at least magazines aren't too expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't complain. The weapons are second hand, and I need to do a little bit of cleaning on them. As a person that had them before, um, I can only describe him as disgusting. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to need to give them a bit of a corona clean. Let's hope he never listens to this, eh? I hope he does. Otherwise, he will never learn. Mm. Uh, don't be disgusting, or just easy. They'll call you out. <laughs> do, 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 were we rolling when uh, that happened? By the way, because I would rather love. Um, in our, I actually, country. I actually think we were. Cool. Oh. Was it? Was it after? Was it after I did the audio leveling? It was. Yeah, we were definitely rolling. Cool. <laughs> because, um, along with um, my own oh no, uh, Guthrum of Norvix, great. Uh, I think that would be an excellent little, um, <clears throat> little bike. soundbite, yeah. Yeah, of uh, Jeff Easton screaming like a girl. Flashback. Uh, whenever you want to start, go warm. Ah! Sure. End of flashback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, you, then you need to send me all the um, all the sound bites, and I will try and code us a uh, soundboard. That'd be quite fun. Oh, dear. Uh, well, X. um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be very funny. Um, w without us descending too much into ripping on each other, uh, I think we should introduce our guest this week, uh, Mr. Toby Domes, uh, who I believe is a member of Regia, uh, which is your group, uh, Shy Reef. Oh, uh, for uh, sake, Toby. <laughs> Don't rename yourself. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> he ruined his leveling. No, no, no. So Toby decided that instead of name leaving the name that I'd given him that's perfect for what we're actually doing and the fact this is in the video, he decided to annoy my autistic brain by changing the name which not only meant that it didn't say his real name, it put his name right to the top, which means that it's just really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> so yeah, Toby Dones, everyone. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what what period do you reenact? Uh, how long have you been doing it? That sort of thing. Well, I've been in Reggae for over... Well, yeah, this is my 10th year now, I think. Jesus. Uh, and yeah, I'm currently working on a relatively swanky, 
Swedishy type of uh, Viking and early Viking impression, you know, the baggies and the wraps and all that fun stuff, as well as also pimping up just generic good boy Saxon. And then obviously going on eventually to set up Norman and uh, Angevin. Angevin. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So a bit, a bit of a hobby butterfly, but got your fingers in many pies. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try and get as much stuff to kind of cover all as I can. Oh, no, that's awesome. Um, so what what got you into reenacting in the first place? What was your what was your moment where you thought, yep, that's how I want to spend my weekends? Um, sweaty, smelling of smoke, and fucking poor all the time. God, it's a bit of a fucking story. So... I kind of loved the idea of combat from Bernard Cornwall's Warlord trilogy, the um, Arthurian one. And uh, was at the time on one of the old internet forums for a zombie webcomic. And uh, someone who was at the time a member of Reggae, I'm not sure if he still is now, posted a picture of himself up in one of the post a picture of you threads. And I just got chatting with him. He directed us to Regia, and I got in touch with what was my local group at the time and was kind of bitten pretty quickly. Hang on, Toby. This doesn't sound right. I thought you said you joined Regia to honour your ancestors. <laughs> and we all if I was to joining something ancestors. to honour my ancestors, I'd be doing something Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> So you you be a Sopranos cosplayer, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> shit. Um, well, you did say Italian. Oh god, no. yeah, that's uh, that's massive story involving uh, my granddad years ago, uh, uh. like pre-internet family history, uh, working out and stuff. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, a couple of members of my group have um, just done some genealogy, uh, seeing what percentage, you know, mongrel they end up. Um, Elite Viking ancestor! <laughs> surprisingly little Scandinavian, lots of Irish. Um, so that led to a few sharp references, as you might imagine. Bastard. <laughs> so, Bastard. Out, outside Bastard. of the enactment... <laughs> that's it. That's the rest of the uh, the podcast now. It's just various impressions of Sean Bean's bastard. Are we doing ba bastard? Bastard. 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 Now that's soldiering, right? Back <laughs> in the <laughs> so Toby. Um, outside of reenactment, um, what what other things interest you? You mentioned you're a Bernard Cornwell fan, uh, so that, that kind of goes hand in hand with reenactment, I think. Uh, oh so what, yeah, what, absolutely, what, really on there. Yeah, what else kind of grabs your interest? What else do you spend your time doing? Uh, I'm a bit of a Lord of the Rings nerd. Uh, quite like Terry Goodkind's uh, Sword of Truth series as well. Just sticking on books there. Mm. Uh, obviously 40k because for the Emperor. Of course. Nerd! <laughs> I did. I did put up a post. Um, I think it was towards the end of last year, saying that I had enough, um, you know, likes on my page. You know, enough fans of Goat Worn to make my own Space Marine chapter. Um, I think that would be a pretty fucking cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, you know the Salt Knights or something. There would have to be a, an offshoot of the of the Space Wolves, though. Yeah. See that that's. That was my like debating point. Whether because not everyone who's a fan of the page is a Viking reenactor, um, so I thought maybe actually being that we we're trying to spread the salt across the galaxy, a crusading element of the like oh, the black. I can see it. Galaxy. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, like go, go the salt knights. Um, but yeah, that that was my debating point. Or almost so, like um. Almost like the Iron Hands, we've been, you know, mechanically enhanced to mine the maximum amount of salt. <laughs> Counterpoint: yeah. sticking with the Space Wolves, but Space Wolves who've turned around and gone, no, we want to be accurate to the Vikings. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> power armor. The, the, yeah, we, we've gone for a different like author of the series. So we've stepped away from wolf amulets, wolf pelts, and wolf swords and wolf fang fist um, to the more traditional um, view of them, like Rogue Trader era. Yeah. So I now just want to see Space Wolves in baggy power armor <laughs> trousers. Oh my God. Power armored flares. I did see someone, um, uh, not not to get too stuck into 40k, but just because I know you guys will appreciate it. There's a chap on Facebook who's been making um, a Toy Story themed force. Um, <laughs> so he's got a, one of those flying Primaris as Buzz, uh, the Gene Stealer Cowboy Gunslinger as Woody, um, a Narlock, Greater Narlock as Rex. And one of the new um, orc vehicle, you know, those um, buggies, at, uh, RC. I He's believe done- that's um, oh, how do you say cursed? <laughs> yeah. uh, to be fair, I've seen the Buzz Light. I th- well, I think I've seen the Buzz Lightyear one. I really and it looks to fucking that. dope. I really want to see that. that sounds yeah, to be I'll- fair, the way the way the model is done is it the interceptor? Um, yeah, it yeah, does kind of look Buzz Lightyearish, right? Mm. But yeah, I'll, I'll link that across to you, Guthrum, because that's uh, yeah. If, you, if that, you're interested in that, it's he's done a bloody good job of the paintwork as well. Um, so not to rub my own cock too much, but being that this is my platform, uh, Toby, when did you first hear about Goat Worn Armbands, and what is your favourite comic? Bloody how to when? I think it was. Uh... Yeah, I think it was right at the start of you actually kicking off properly. I think you only had like maybe four, maybe five comics out at the time. Mm. It was like the first one that properly went viral. Yeah, I think that it was probably one of my Norman bashing ones that went um, viral because up until a certain point, like the first year or so, it was largely... um, it was directed at friends and my old group. It was, you know, very much an in joke. And then, as as you do, you get more friends in different groups, and they pass it on and they share it, and suddenly you've got nearly three thousand likes already. Um, but yeah, so you, so you've been a fan from the early days then. Um, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's not nice to have someone who's put up with me for that long. <laughs> um, as long as you keep tickling my funny bone. Oh, yes, don't worry. Um, <laughs> all the innuendo. So, yeah, which, oh, yes. what would you say is your favourite? Um, or if you don't have a partic- an individual favourite, what's your favourite type of comic? Um, which are the ones that tickle you the most? The tickle is pickle. Yeah, that's mm. pickle. Honestly, it's hard to put a fucking pin on because it's mainly the ones that I can relate to the most. Mm. Like the generic fucking hell, everyone's been there type ones. Like the uh, authentic shoes going on your arse on ground. Oh, that one for a fan. Oh, for that sure. was yeah, good, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think my favourite... Me and my Toby most shared one that experience as well uh hastings yeah <laughs> fucking up. just trying to walk down the hill to walk the traders up to the, yeah up and to the it, it was like watching two fucking drunks <laughs> there was I, a guy I, just I remember, remember my that. first hastings 2016 quite new into reenactment i'll never forget this poor italian man must have fallen down for about an hour before anybody realized he was drunk and you know just off the statue if you go down through the forest yeah, we were coming yeah. down that part from the camp. I'm, and I'm talking, I was, I was incredibly drunk. Yeah, the, the, the bit, the bit that comes down from the paved area mm-hmm. up towards the actual abbey, right? On yeah, the, the far left. If you're looking at the abbey, yeah, I think the fellow was um, relieving himself at one point and it slipped. Oh, no. And uh, yeah, and nobody heard him obviously because he was down there. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I was Shit. like, oh mate. Oh, but no, that is deadly. Those both sides of that bloody place is deadly. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I well, mean, well, you saw how it was closed off last year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't well, been back. Um, our our guy went down on that one. Um, 
and that's that's why I did the post uh, saying thank you to uh, the nurse, uh, the, or a nurse in training, I think she was, but she was a member of a Norman group, and she came up and uh, <clears throat> she was like the first on the scene and stayed with him throughout until the ambulance turned up and sorted. Oh, that's, that's really nice, actually. Um, I think that's oh, a good example like of, of the wholesomeness in the reenactment community sometimes. Mm, yeah. It was, it was certainly appreciated by us because, um, you know, we not all of us are trained first aiders, so there's only so much we can do yeah, practically. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, and we've got other members to look after and sort out. And, and you know, she didn't have to do it. Yeah, it's just out of the goodness of, you know, her heart. Um, yeah, you know, massive props to her and... Uh, I, th- I think we we did find out who it was in the end, and we sent um, sent our thanks. Uh, but yeah, so, sorry. Uh, so we we kind of <laughs> left you in the dust a little there, Toby. Um, so what is your favourite comic? Uh, the most recent favourite one is probably um, he meeting the uh, other dude. Oh, the Mongolian huh. one. Yeah, that yeah. one. Um, that's uh, yeah, our friend from China. Um, he he is such a lovely guy as well, uh, and I know I've spoken about him and his cooking in a previous episode. Oh yeah. But I genuinely, um, until I was reminiscing the other day, uh, I had comp- not clicked what I'd done uh, by introducing him. Um, you know that whole dynamic of hello, you know this is my Chinese friend. Here's a Mongolian you'd like to meet. <laughs> but, oh no. <laughs> Um, but I, like, as I said in the comic, and you know, he said himself on there in the comments, um, they got astronomically shit faced together uh, to the point that someone, one of the marshals, I think, had to walk her back to our camp. Um, you know, I heard him at some stupid o'clock in the morning, uh, gently singing in Chinese and <laughs> to his yeah. tail. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad you liked that one. I thought that was, uh, it struck me as a funny um, story, so I'm glad other people enjoyed it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, um, oh, I've also been, uh, just finished the uh, Conig and um, Mongolian series, book-wise. Ah, so, it's, so timing-wise. It, it, oh, it yeah, timing-wise, it was just like, ha, Mongolian and Chinese. <laughs> yeah, I I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for the rest of their conversation and what they spoke about o- over the evening, but I ended up um catching up with quite a few other people that evening. Actually, do uh, so. I've, I've, I'll try and mine him for information. I doubt he is that evening, apart from <laughs> like a horn being placed in his hands every five minutes. I had a famous drink. Oh boy. Mm. Are we sure they were always horns? Well, yeah, you, yeah, at a certain yeah. point, you don't know, do you? It's just, it, yeah, oh, that, yeah. that's a horn, that's a bottle, that's a flask. You know, this this that's strange guy penis. that you've just met has been getting you <laughs> worryingly drunk. Now, now. <laughs> I mean, wasn't that our first meeting with each other? What? How did no <laughs> no claim? We didn't actually talk much when we first met. I think it was um, Detling twenty seventeen, and you were sorting out the beachhead. Uh, and I came yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those high person. I don't know. Here's a thing. Get moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was, I was fresh face. How how times have changed, huh? Probably why I didn't recognise you at Sweatlink last year. Sweatlink. Because, <laughs> you know, obviously the... on a flat hill with no shade in the middle of the hottest summer on record, oh, God. De- we decided to wear wool. Mm. Well, De- Detling last year oh, and 2017 were both scorchers. Um, De- uh, I think it got was 35 degrees in the shade last year. That was... Yeah, that was pretty mental. Um, it was a great event. Um, but uh, although I'm not sure, I would st- I would rather have had the year before, which was horrendous amounts of rain. 
So oh, yeah, it's a, no, it's the a... year before was horrible. And they gave yeah. us fucking cedar wood to burn. Yeah, they gave us toxic wood. So um, like, we had to so we were all, huddled. all the hatch. Yeah. yeah, we had to fucking hotbox ourselves with cedar wood. It was this is a, beautiful. Um... Did you get it's high a... at least? That sounds like fucking miserable. No, we had people who <laughs> had asthma attacks for yeah. like over a decade suddenly having asthma attacks. Oh shit! Yeah, so, and, and and it was so was wet. It... Someone um someone slipped and shattered their pelvis in the toilet blocks. Oh no, 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 no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless her. Yeah. The um, way you pronounce shattered, yeah. it, I really didn't think you were going to say it slipped and shattered themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely I, I, I unmuted my. I mic I, I don't know enough to comment about that one. Actually, I um, did. It was but yeah, that the was night that was before... really unfortunate. It was the night before, that same year, the night before the really bad wind and rain where we had to hotbox ourselves. Are you saying you, you shot yourself? No, I, <laughs> you uh, I was looking yourself. for um, one of the OC members uh, who'd stumbled off drunk, and I thought I'd found him in one of the um, big portal cabins. Turns out it was someone from a Greek reenactment scene. But they were literally curling around the toilet with their trousers half down and just puke and shit. Oh god! Everywhere, bless them. Lad, sorry to, to, to our be viewers for watching this while eating dinner. My burgers were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, De- Detling stories are the best, man. Especially of Mercia. <laughs> is uh, is Detling organised by the same people that organise Hastings by any chance? Uh, no, no, Hastings is English heritage. You see, I wasn't yeah. going to name them. <laughs> Detling, Detling is uh, well. It's 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 themselves. Their 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 page is called Military Odyssey. I think they're really oh, really yeah. good organisers actually. Um, and the event Fun. is fantastic. One of my Fun favorites. Enough. Well, we're Fun hoping enough, to go I think along this got invited several times. Mm. It's really really worthwhile. Um, I mean, you'll be able to come as regular anyway now, Tom. But... Yeah. If it's uh, happening. Yeah. yeah, that's the biggest yes, thing yeah. this year. So, uh, aside from, like, people shitting themselves, breaking their pelvis, and dying of... No, no, the shitting themselves didn't actually happen. Okay. No, but... it did. It was the one I found. Who just, just <laughs> I shit oh, everywhere. okay. No, it did happen then, yeah. So, definitely. yeah. See, I was listening, Alex. Um, I'm used to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, aside from that... What would be your, I guess, your favourite event and your favourite reenactment moment? Favourite events? I don't think I can pin it down to an individual one. I think most enjoyable recently was a regular private training thing at Oystermouth Castle. Oh, that was fucking That awesome. was fun. I missed the first day of it, though, because I went to help oh, yeah, out did, at a half-day show in Oxford with, at a private school. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah so um, I, I live in Lincolnshire, so I went all the way to Oxfordshire, and then all the way to fucking Oystermouth, and then back again. with. And this was whilst I was in my um, Smart for Four car. So this little fucking smart car with a massive, like, eight-person uh, ghetto tent in the back going up these fucking random hills and mountains and fucking whales just because the main motorway was completely gone mm. for being repaired and stuff. Yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed Oyster Mouth, and I really hope it's on this year. Yeah. Um, for for anyone that doesn't understand the context, it's um Oystermouth is a castle in Swansea and um basically the, the group we're part of get to use it as a basically a private playground for the weekend. Uh as a as a train a private training event. It's great fun. That sounds fucking amazing. Not that we're trying to give any incentive to join us. <laughs> oh, actually, no. The other one would be uh, Wickers at War as well. Last year, I never, I never made that. Unfortunately, ah, uh, it was um, so good, and we had like some, of the, you know, like you know how some of the regular lasses are incredible singers. Yeah. Oh, that actually, in... actually, you know what? <laughs> uh, what about Twelfth um, Night? 
Ah, oh, Twelfth Night was brilliant fun. They're 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 like nothing else. Absolutely, like the the decoration in the long hall was just absolutely fantastic. I wasn't there this year, unfortunately, which was a real bummer. Were, were you saying, Toby, that um, you know you got some uh, decent singers in your group? Were, were the acoustics in that location really good for them? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it is a it is a wooden long hall, so the acoustics oh. just reverb beautifully on it. Because we did um, our Yule feast uh, last year at the Ancient Tech Center in Dorset. Oh, I've uh, seen. Yeah, you've shown me um, pictures that's, of that. Yeah, that's bloody lovely. And we we've got some. Uh, all, all the blokes seem to have really shit voices. You know, we, we can do all the bawdy um, pub sea songs. shanties and pub yeah, songs. We, yeah, we can do yeah. that no problem. Um, but the women in our group absolutely put us to shame uh, because they've got absolutely beautiful singing voices. And especially in a, uh, a roundhouse um, with a kind of almost a... Uh, an amphitheatre set into the earth. Uh, you, you know, you, you do walk down into it as you go through the uh, the door. Um, to hear them do that is oh, that was just magical. So yeah, I can imagine it being spectacular in a long haul. There's nothing uh, quite like it, is there? No. I, will, I will forward you the pictures from the Twelfth Night events that we've had. Um, it's, I mean, this was. Uh, Wickers, I think uh, the Wickers War event that Toby was specifically on about, but the the ambience in general of that hall is just phenomenal. Mm. Well, I mean, it's our own private, like it's owned by the society, so it's our own private pa- patch of land. Which you know, we've got the long hall, we've got mm. a forge building, it's got a massive palisade, and the neighbours right next door is. Um, the, what is the, the Kent Wild na- nature, Wood- nature Sanctuary, basically? Yeah, a nature sanctuary, um, yeah. Uh, with wolves in it. So occasionally you just hear the wolves howling as well in the middle of the night. That's why uh, I'm super excited. Um, the Hraff and Varengi uh, group based in Birmingham, they're one of our kind of Eastern Red Wing groups in the UK. I don't know, you guys might have seen it, but they're, uh, they're building their uh, buildings now, uh, kind of quote unquote authentically. I'm looking forward to that being used in this scene. The more yeah. of it, the more I mean, buildings and the more stuff we have in the UK, the better the whole the whole country goes, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. It adds a whole other level to the I, games. I, and I stuff. never understood, um, and that's one thing. Like I always thought, Reggie had better than the Vike. You know, and I, I I swear I don't mean to call the Vike out in every single show, but they do it to <laughs> themselves. But why? You know, I, I would be happy not getting expenses for a year. If they said, okay, look, with everything we make for the next couple of years, we're going to buy some land for, for, the, for the society. But instead, they don't. I, I, I can't picture why they don't invest it into the society more. Yeah. I, I think this. the thing I'd say is, I don't know, I, although I think that the Vike have done about as much film work as we have, so I, they, they presumably have enough money to do it. I think they're more focused on, um, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong, but I think they more focus on putting it back into the uh, society members itself, which isn't to say that the money spent on Wickers by Regia doesn't benefit the society because mm. it fucking It's does. just different choices. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I've seen the pictures from it, and, you know, if I hadn't been in the Vike and I was looking at Regia and the Vike and, you know, if somebody said, well, actually, this one's got, you know, a fucking longhouse uh, compound. And got a long got, hall. They've got this, this one's got some expenses. You can have at Hastings if you can make it through the mud. I'd be like, yeah, man, I'd probably go for the long haul. It looks good. I'm not going to lie. Like, all jokes aside uh, about the societies, I think Reggie definitely one ups the bike in that, in that regard, in my opinion, anyway. I think that the the like you said, you hit the nail on the head a minute ago, where where you said that it, you know more more and more groups are making an effort with this kind of thing. And I think that's so important. But, and uh, you know, it's really nice to see it. So just just to lead on from that, um, obviously, you know, I think that's it's fair that they, you know, they're both benefiting their members with you know the funds, and it's it's interesting to see the comparison between the two. Um, you know, you compare it to other groups. You've got obviously Regia 
offering land and a location to do training. You've got the Vike who reimburse their members. And, you know, considering the tra- distance you travel, um, that's it's really that, good that reimbursement. Can that can make a real difference. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the Free War Bands of England. Yeah, I, I, I would love to do an event where you can hear wolves in the next, you know, field over. Essentially, the the most the clear, the, the only thing I've had is, and I, I did a comic about it, is peacocks at three in the morning. Um, That's fucking hilarious. It's just no, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I remember seeing a comic from you, feathery bastards. Yeah. And, uh, if you ever come into South Wales, near me, there's a place called Harold Stones. Coincidentally, have nothing to do with Harold. They're about 2,000 years older than him. Um, it's a little village, but it's got an old Norman uh, kind of hill fort remnant there. Oh, yeah. And there's just this random ass peacock that lives in everybody's house. And it's like, I remember because when we got in, uh, you know, we walked over to the Norman thing and just, just this massive sign before you enter the field saying, if you see the peacock, just leave him alone. Just don't even so, look at it. At my <clears throat> university, the halls I lived first year, um, after, well, so they, they always had loads of seagulls and shit that would rip all the, the rubbish out the bins and fling it around. Um, but, but, like, the end of the period of which I was in the halls, uh, onwards, there have been three or four peacocks that have just lived there. Um, on the the uh, the whole site, and they they're just there. And it's so strange. I don't understand why. No one seems to understand why. It's just the case now. Maybe the government surveillance. It's not the seagulls. Oh yes, yeah. Big brain. Well, no, because <laughs> everyone expects the pigeons. Nobody. But nobody... <laughs> exactly. Do you reckon each individual? Um, in parentheses, eyes on their feathers when they fan the uh, the they are cameras, they are cameras, yeah, yeah, Yeah. they are one definitely. So, yes, uh, can stay tuned for more conspiracy theories with Goat One Armband. Um, (laughs) (laughs) so, um, Toby, uh, you might you're welcome to join us in on this bit. Uh, we're gonna do a bit of a QA. Uh, I put up a post. And Guthrum of Norvik did the same on his uh, his page, and yeah, very questionable answers. Should yeah, we that... just go down the list. Yeah, I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Uh, okay. So first up, uh, we have Mister Ted Jones, uh, who I believe makes some excellent scabbards. Um, Understatement. Hopefully... If yeah, if if I say enough nice things about his scabbards, maybe he'll make me one. Um, <laughs> yeah. He asked, please answer the question I've asked myself for about 40 years. Why the hell do we dress up in itchy clothes, get pissed, or, or get pissed wet through, and scorched to a crisp in the same weekend, and blind ourselves with wood smoke? Apparently this is fun. Yes, it is fun. Yeah, um, I was going to say. It's, it's, for all the inconveniences and all the bits that we'll bitch about <laughs> to our mates and between ourselves about, you know, getting wood smoke, uh, getting wet, getting cold, getting itchy. The, some of the memories that you build in reenactment, um, regardless of what group you're in, what what events you do, it are some of the best memories that you can make. You know, um, oh, there's definitely. nothing quite like, you know, being in camp all day. Um, you know, living, more, you know, roughly, you know, to a degree like um, people of your period would. Fighting, you know, it's a nice way to let off steam, and then all being able to go off the field, shake hands, and go right. I'll see you in the pub later. Um, it's just the brilliant. friendship and brotherhood you make from it all. I don't mm. care what anybody anybody says, but you know, I think we've all had hobbies and we've all got hobbies outside of doing bike stuff, you know. But there's nothing quite like I say bike as a, as a generic term, but yeah, there's, there's nothing, nothing quite like, and like exactly like you said when. I left the field in 2016 after Hastings. And it was my first big battle. I can't, I can't even tell you the feelings I had. And, I, you know, it's, 
it's amazing being on the field, seeing potentially what somebody else could have seen all those years ago. If you are doing some free fighting, um, you know, potentially having that level of like, you know, 4D chess, I guess, against someone. And it's just like what, you know, I, I, I personally think that it also sounds better. What did you get up to the weekend? Cleaned me car, mate. What did you get up to the weekend? I ah, hacked someone in Edward. Hacked. It's it, it's nice. It's good. And it's torch. Couldn't have put it better myself, mate. But yeah. And and it's wanna... also uh, cathartic. <clears throat> you had a shit week. Too big for me. Uh, you ha- well, you know, like you had a shit week. You go to a reenactment event. It brings all the depression away. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think one of the best phrases I've seen for it is the family you chose. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's a family outside of a family, isn't it? That's bang on point. Yeah. It's people, I suppose you've got people in it you could rely on, at least in my own experience, you can rely on more than you could potentially rely on some actual family members, so... Well, yeah. I mean, for example, Toby, you're a very good friend of mine. I trust you with my life. That's no. that foolish. Get a room. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just as an example, Sim. because it was Sim. Like, Sim. like the fuck, bro. Would you, why you do me like this? No, like, <laughs> there, there are people. Um, Toby's one of them in Reggae that I would trust with my life because they are that good as friends. That Isn't it's just biggest unparalleled. From, oh. from from the Vite Western to Eastern, for me, the single biggest draw, apart from combat, I prefer the combat style, mm. is the way the culture is ingrained in Europe. Um, where and I see it at Regia, and it's why I gave you big props for the uh, with the Saxon Hall and stuff. It's that, and I know we all joke about her dirty ancestors, but in reality, <laughs> actually seeing it done properly to an extent out there. Is fucking phenomenal. The mm, ceremony yeah. before the battle at Volin. There's a I do, if you go online and look, there's a bloody drum and it takes five people to bang it, and it's huge. Oh. It's massive, and you got these guys banging the drum, and you we, you know you you got all of the different banners out, and you know maybe a hundred different banners, and there's girls singing. We've got an we've got an anthem for our Slavic side, so the girls are singing the singing that, and the men do the chorus, and. Yeah, I, I just think brings all these different people from different backgrounds and gives us something to do that we actually enjoy. And mm. I think that people that might not necessarily like combat will do it because they enjoy the living history aspect or, or vice versa. And some people don't like it either way, but they go for the social aspect. And I think it's, mm. that, it's that thing to bring people in it. It's like an adult community. Center. I think people join for the fighting or the history, but they <clears throat> stay for the people. Yeah. 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 So that that drum must be a hell of a size, you know. I'll see if I can find a picture of it, mate. You can see it on the uh, on the YouTube video. Yeah. but it takes five people to bang it. Yes, what? mate. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's a static drum, and um, like drum, then. so yeah. Let me see if I can get it up. That's I have a got Chad a picture. Drum. <laughs> Almost. Oh God! I've just predicted Alex's next meme. Did, did, did I cut out when I dropped the the mum joke? Yes. I didn't yeah. hear it, so yeah. But I, let me set it up again. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, if you, oh, crap, if you go to 052 and look just in front of the ambulance, it's quite difficult to see, actually. But you ambulance. can see there's four or five people. Yeah, Eastern. Should we ambulance continue there. with the next question before we get no, into I, I want to get. I want to get my answer in first. I want to get my answer in. Okay. I do reenactment for the enlightening questions asked by the public. Is that, a, uh, is that a real baby? <laughs> you see. Are you going to eat that? That's yes, you I'm going to eat the Are baby. Eat is that a real fire? <laughs> Stick your yeah, touch it, mate. Now. See what happens. I think my favourite one of the public ones has been whilst I was in the middle of eating my lunch, so visibly shoveling the food into my mouth. No, they're not really eating it. <laughs> to, <laughs> to to be fair, I mean the good thing is we can joke about those. Mm. Like there are there are worse ones out there. Yeah. Oh man, um, I, yeah. I, I, I distinctly oh. remember at uh, Jipperswick 2019, I think it was. Yeah, 2019 must have been. Um, there was this lady that came and decided to have a natter with me. And somehow we got onto the topic of modern PPE, like 
because I mentioned I was a welder and somehow we got onto that conversation and what the fuck, I don't know. Uh, she was a nutter. So, <laughs> mental. our next question comes from Mike Everest. And this, this is a doozy. This is a proper doozy. Um, cards on the table. Who wins in a fight? Harold Hardrada, armed with a broom-handled C96 Mauser, or Alfred the Great, armed with a Webley, chambered in 0.455? Harold? Um, yeah. I will actually Photoshop this. Do Good. Beautiful. Right. Um, the, the battlefield yeah. is the gift shop at a standard English heritage castle show you working. I tell you what, Mike, um, because that is such a fantastic question and Alex has just offered, we shall Photoshop the answer. Uh, and and it has to be in an English heritage uh, gift yes, shop. That, that is the defining bit about it. It's, it's not just on the battlefield. It's it's specifically, he has specifically stated the the area designated for combat is a gift shop at a standard english heritage castle so okay so we'll definitely photoshop that but in the meantime what are people's thoughts and i can hear just eastern playing with his airsoft stuff in the back oh, sorry like a sharp fidget fidget spinner it's like come on <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm debating i'm trying to figure out if, you know if I, if I was harold's size could i aim this pistol faster or not I think Harold would win because that Broomhead uh, Mauser is a formidable weapon. I think the the thing for me um, that would swing it for Hadrada is he I mean, is a, he is a not, career not, warrior. He is. And Alfred there's, there's, was weak. Well, there's that. Um, too busy shitting himself. Yeah, not in so many words, but Alfred was known for having health issues and. That could swing it if he was having a bit of an off day, you know. If he was, if he was feeling a bit queasy down below, that might tremble his hand as he went for the trigger. Also, it doesn't stipulate here that either of them know how to use a gun. I was they just thinking that. Yeah, man, you could end up for a fist fight. Uh, we, well, I would, I would assume we were going with the logic that they, they, you know, in this. This version of Mike's reality <laughs> that he's created, that they do know how to use a gun. Mm. I think it'd be infinitely more amusing if they didn't know. I, I well, think but, well, they didn't if, know what a they, gun was. If they didn't, the broom-handled Mauser, the, the case it comes in that doubles up as the stock, would make an excellent club. Mm. Oh, you could definitely bludgeon someone with that. Mm. I'm, just, mm. I'm just imagining Harold Hardrada running after a sickly man, yelling obscenities and old Norse beating him with a gun. Yeah, <laughs> I think... I think I that would swing it for me. I think that all things being equal, um, unless Alfred was lucky enough to get off the shot first and scored a fatal wound, which but is not the, always a guarantee. The question thing. is, maybe Alfred is wise enough to work out how the how the weapon works, and Hadrada is is not wise enough, so well, he uses it like a. Club. I think they're both fairly smart. Mm. This yeah. is true. This is true. Harold was no, uh, yeah. Harold was no brute. Oh no. Yeah. I um. Yeah, I, I think like as much as I'd actually like to say, you know, Alfred the Great in that circumstance, I definitely, definitely think Hadrada's got the over. Hadrada would chat him out in that in that yeah. scenario. Yeah, in the one to one, definitely Hadrada. Um, like from my understanding, at least, Alfred's definitely more right. I'm going to move these guys here. These guys here. And fuck that guy up. Oh, he's a, he's a tactical warrior rather than a physical one, you mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying Hadrada isn't tactical either. I'm just saying Hadrada's got, at least going by the record, the more personal involvement the personal compared to Alfred. Touch. Yeah. He's more Which, marked. you know, in the close confines of an English heritage gift shop, the personal touch is what sells it. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine Harold Hadrada beating Alfred over the head with a uh, a little um, souvenir of the castle, like a little china? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was yeah. more thinking like the generic Knight Templar Great Helm. I, I was hoping he was going to pick oh, up the kiddie yes. Oh, no, or the really bad replica of the Sutton Who. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
actually, that might stop the fight. They both like stop and look at it and go, "What the fuck is this?" And <laughs> they, they both they both find common ground with how shit the reconstruction is. And then they start Facebook messaging goat one armband. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I drinking don't like the because, I don't yeah. like I don't like where this head cannon is going. <laughs> Sure. So we're in agreement then. They no, well, don't man, fight we found this, and just we found this horrible thing. It's... Who... Go one man. <coughs> we found this really inaccurate helmet, and and it's like we were fighting, but that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> oh, Why shit. do you make them sound like whiny high schoolers? That was the point, Tom. Oh, uh, okay. To be fair, they pretty much are. Yeah, <laughs> they're fighting in an English heritage gift shop. <laughs> so I think we've 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 kind of reached the conclusion of largely we're in agreement that how Hadrada would win, um, but if they happen to see a, a poor reconstruction of a contemporary helmet, they join forces and start shit posting. Um, Ross Cromshaw, um, the thirsty boy himself, choose from two. Um, the second question we've kind of covered before, so I'm not going to do that one. So I'm just going to go for the first one. Uh, lighthearted question. If you could take any historical figure, any period, for a few beers and a chat in a pub, who would, it, who would you choose and why? Uh, so, Guthrum, who would you choose? Ooh. You might have to come back to me on that one. <laughs> that's, no. a, that's a heavy question. Uh, just Easton? I was thinking about this earlier on when I seen it, and there's as many, many people that I would like to have a drink with, but if they book, if we could speak together, I genuinely would like to speak to Alexander the Great and be like, yeah. why exactly did you <laughs> why do don't? what you did? Why <laughs> don't? Alexander, yeah. why? Yeah. No, but, but Alex, why don't? It was, it, was, it was always more, wasn't it? And I'd like to speak, you know, he's considered the greatest strategist of you know all time but he was dumb as fuck as well so and, and he Why was though? incredibly vain yeah man bit of vainness you mean the guy who named nearly every bloody I city i think it was 109 a named after yeah him, no that no doesn't one. strike me as vanity at all sarcasm um, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, def- I think like today flavor of the month alexander for me but that could change tomorrow <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Shire Reeve. So, if I had the choice of anyone, I, I mean, there are, like like uh, Just Easton said, there are a lot of people that I could um, ask questions to, but the one that springs to mind is Hans Talhofer. Um, Hans Talhofer is a, is a German um, uh, judicial combat master, basically. He, he teaches... Uh, uh, he, he taught a lot of different um, fighting styles and he made a couple of manuscripts that were basically advertisements for mm. his teaching that are used for HEMA today, but they're actually quite limited because they are basically just advertisements. Um, and the thing is, Hans Talhofer, um, the reason he didn't write down loads of, like, details on his techniques like Fiore did is because um, he hated the poor and um, <laughs> I I would he, he was a very self-centered man and he hated the poor and I would just I'd love to understand just where he's coming from with that but um <laughs> Yeah, he's he's such a strange character, and in these these fighting manuscripts that he made, um, all the people in them, because he would demonstrate the techniques to the illuminator who would then draw them, he was every character in it. So, like most of the pictures are of him fighting himself. That's brilliant. It's it's so strange. See, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there was lost ones that were ones that he kept himself. That Maybe. were literally, this is how you get from point A to point B. 
but you have to pay for my classes. Yeah, to find it's out. it's it's possible. Um, it's possible. Join my OnlyFans to. <laughs> <laughs> It was literally like that. It was like, it was like you you would only learn what he knew by paying him effectively. Mm. Uh, but we can glean some information from his original treatises. So, what about you, Toby? Which figure would you uh, have a have a view with? I would probably say Sir Christopher Lee. He's dead, oh. therefore he's historical. Good choice. Yes, he, he did. He, he, he's amazing, he was, isn't he? He was um, ex special forces as well, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. And a Nazi hunter, and just oh, what was the um, Dang. what was the quote? Something like it was one of the directors. Oh, um, Peter was Jackson. To... Yeah, um, it was. Yeah, uh, you told me Return this. Return of the King. Yeah, yeah, it was Return of the King. Peter Jackson was like, no, 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 no. If you're being stabbed in the back, you're like, ha. You know, like the very traditional how you see it in most movies. And Christopher Lee just turns around in the most deadpan face and says, I know what a man being stabbed in the back sounds like. <laughs> yeah, he, he then goes on to demonstrate that you almost make a gasping noise because all the air has been driven out of your lungs. Exactly. That's the one, you've yeah. You've fallen from any height on your back. Yeah, you can't, you can't breathe properly, you can't talk. <laughs> He Crazy. also witnessed the last beheading via guillotine, France. And well, I mean, he, also the only, just he was the only member of the cast to ever actually meet Tolkien. Yeah. Fucking A. No, that's he was old really enough sing. to have actually met him, yeah. His singing yeah. voice is quite good, too. Uh, exactly. Ah, oh, fucking hell, his concept metal albums. He's almost like a traditional polymath, but like in the modern setting. Yeah. He has a lot no, of different things that he was doing. I mean, he's he's kind of like Hadrada in that sense. He's, he had his yeah, finger... Yeah. Well, Christopher Lee is mm. Harold Hadrada confirmed? This is our, te- <laughs> this is our theory. But I, I mean, he's actually Charlemagne confirmed, because he is oh. a direct descendant of Charlemagne. As well, was a direct descendant. I mean, I mean he's still... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Guthrum, have you had chance to think? Ooh... This is going to be a really weird one, but that this is just my humour playing in, I suppose. Other than the fact that he was Muslim, so by that merit, couldn't actually drink. Ibn Fadlan? It would be Ibn Fadlan. Yeah. Because Ooh. I want to know... What he actually... What the fuck he was on about. Yeah. <laughs> Personally. Like, did what he mean scabbards, his... or did he mean literal skin? Like, the tattoos... Because those are the two main schools of thought that they were either highly decorated scabbards, so the skin of the scabbard, I suppose, or literally people's arms, the, the tattoos up the arms. Uh, That's two main two main schools of thought, to my knowledge. But also all the other stuff he uh, goes on about. A lot of it, I just want to know. By stuff, you mean um, bollocks? I, yeah, basically, I, I want to. Uh, I would want to speak to him in a candid way. Okay, which one of these did you make up just to, uh, to um, entertain people, and which ones did you actually see? Ah. Well, you have just touched on a really good point about using him as a uh, as a primary source, um, which is he was Muslim, looking at a completely different culture hmm. and writing about it for and his different the, culture. The stories he told. You can't tell because the the simple the simplicity of it is that he was trying to produce this theatrical impression. It's like the Shakespearean version of the Viking Age. Exactly. You can think of and, it like that. I mean, it's, it's as as, yeah. as Toby mentioned, he describes the uh, the Volga Rus he met up with as the most disgusting creatures on God's earth. But to be fair, compared to the culture he came from. Yeah, everyone is fucking filthy. Yeah, like he yeah. comes from a culture where you wash several times a day. Yeah. And he's talking to a culture where, by the rest of their um, society, shall we say, they're considered very over cleanly because they wash once a week. Yeah, no, that's that's a really int- some good choices, guys. Um, for me, I'd probably step away from the historical. Um, the one I've got in mind at the moment is. 
uh, David Bowie. Um, just because he's, I'm a fan of his music. Uh, he's a very interesting person to chat to. And part of the question is, who would you like to go for a drink with? I think I'd have an awfully good time having a drink with David Bowie. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, you know, um, the story that he's, because one of the big things about him, and I, I've, I keep meeting people who still don't know this, that he supposedly has or had two, uh, you know, both his eyes were different colors. Right. It's not true. Uh, one really? eye simply, uh, has the, the pupil is permanently dilated um, because he, <laughs> to cut a long story short, he told his mate's missus, the, the, who his mate was stepping out with, that he, he had stood her up. And then Bowie took her out instead and ended up sleeping with her. So his mate found out about it and punched him so hard. Um, oh, he damaged his eye, and then it became permanently dilated. Oh, fuck. Yeah. It's, so that's, he, the, he's, that's what you get for being a top shagger. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I think I'd have a fun time with Bowie. Oh, definitely. Um, next question. Ben Harvey, uh, Barcy, asked... Can you confirm or deny that Fe Finris was seen leaving your house at the height of lockdown despite showing coronavirus symptoms? Um, yes, but he did have very good reasons for doing so. You see, he wanted to test his eyesight by driving to mine to see if he could then drive to York and then prance around in La Leather Lamela safely. But obviously he couldn't do that if he couldn't see to drive, so he had to test his eyesight first. Mm. Mm. While wearing a full <laughs> helmet as well. While wearing a full helmet, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, Benjamin Ragnar Boshoff, uh, why reenacting the Viking Age? Um, oddly, <laughs> odd grammar there, but we won't, <laughs> we won't dwell on that. He's German, Cause... it's fine. Ah, that. Oh, okay. Um, for my money, it's the aesthetics of it, um, the. Disproving of, you know, dispelling of myths is a big part of it. You know, the, you know what we think we know versus the the historical fact. It, there, there's quite a disconnect sometimes, and it's it's always fascinating to me to um, bridge that. And in, in a kind of a romantic sense, the Viking Age was probably the last big, you know, the last age of heroes. And I think I may have actually said this on a previous episode. Um, you know that you had not only great heroes and adventures on the Viking side, but also in the peoples that they met and who rose against them. You know, Alfred the Great, for an example, you know, pushed all the way back to the bloody Fens and then raised an army and reconquered half of England. That takes some fucking big bollocks. Um, you know. So yeah, that I think that kind of big age of heroism is what um, inspires me about it. Alfred uh, Madlad, yeah, Alfred Madlad. No, I mean I think you're pretty fair there as well with like the whole age of ancient heroism as well. I mean we can probably thank the Victorians in part for uh, giving us that slightly romanticized view of it. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it does have echoes to, like... There, um, yeah, well, and you can see echoes of it in some of the great literature we've got. Like um, the Rohirrim as one throwaway example from Lord of the Rings, or Conan the Barbarian as well. It all kind of does that in a time ancient and long ago. Oh, don't what? you giving me a ball of just thinking about Conan. <laughs> oh. Well, the... Um, I think for me... Uh, it, I mean, I'll be honest. The Vi the Viking Age as a as a period really interests me, but the Vikings themselves weren't really that much of an attraction to me. Uh, most of the reason I did it is actually because of um, my interest in Anglo Saxon culture, because I grew up in the town of Battle in East Sussex, which I think everyone here is familiar with mm. for being the site of the Battle of Hastings. And so over the years, I, I, I found it really fascinating. And the Vikings kind of, they were never at the same level of interest for me. Um, but the whole age, um, 
like uh, like has been said um it really is a an interesting time and seeing the different cultures meshing and clashing and how they all interacted is just fascinating i did it to honor my ancestors bro stratu <laughs> get out no uh... <laughs> I, I, I got into it I, simply because my brother and myself had no hobbies because we were boring fuck. We played video games all day. And Polish lesbian, to do else. just Eastern things. Yes, you have seen the picture. It's not long after that, actually, I think. Um, we wanted to take on a hobby. And I was, I don't even know what I was looking at at the time. But um, he told me about this group he was going to see. I think I've mentioned it before. And I thought it was a bunch of fucking LARPers. So I was like, nah, man, yeah, I can't be bothered. It was at a pub. So I was like, I'll go because I'll sit at the pub and drink. And then you lot can go outside and twiddle your sticks about. But I went along and the people were actually really nice. And I kind of fell into it that way. And then the more and more I did research on becoming accurate for my kit to an extent, the more I kind of fell in love with just a general kind of error. Much like you guys say, it's the last kind of last error of uh, true mysterious heroes because everything kind of afterwards got some documented evidence whereas we don't from that kind of period and it's 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 interesting to have the sort of questions that we can't pose right now and the idea of people leaving their villages for you know a year or two to go out and seek fortune i think it's it, i don't know there's something mysteriously amazing about that and it it drew me in um pretty yeah honest. well yeah. Th- also the fact that you know they they look at vinland and the um the fact they got all the way to america just by basically sheer luck and and massive fucking bollocks you know, you sure you're going the right way? Yeah, man, I know the sea. <laughs> I mean, that's probably why they had such baggy trousers to fit their gigantic testicles. <laughs> <I> can <laughs> confirm. <laughs> Eric Red, the biggest coal man, of like, oh, follow me, lads. I found a place where there's it's literally flowing with wine. There's lo- like grapes everywhere you look, dude. It's it's made of ice. It's made it's made of fucking ice. Like, Fake oh, news. Oh, next one maybe the next one that my son will find in a few years do you remember like peak 2011 youtube it's just a prank bro look there's a camera over there it's just a prank (laughs) gets bloody good it was just a prank man um so edwin sebastian mark asks why do helmets drawn by the art of gambargan arouse me that is a question accurate yeah, they're accurate. Um, historical accuracy is just <clears throat> yeah. Um, let, let, let's just insert a load of like sex noises here, like just some stock ones. Uh, you, know, you, know the one, you know the one from that um, that uh, basically Rickroll meme where it'll be doing something interesting and then it'll just like blare that out of your speakers. Yeah, uh, yeah, Edwin. That isn't a question that only you and your therapist can answer. Yeah. <laughs> John Phillips, please answer. What time is the battle? Where are the toilets? Who wrote this script? Where is the firewood? Will it rain? Is the kit okay? Two clashes and fight. Um, what time do the mops leave? And how hard do I have to be hit to fall down? So I'm going to give uh, the event organisers amongst you, amongst the audience a little moment to... Um, like for the post-traumatic stress disorder to settle down a bit. Um, But yeah, the the answer to that in the words of my, um, a friend of mine who runs uh, Temple Coup Medieval Fair is wait for commander's meeting. Uh, That's the first answer you'll get. Then as you continue to ask these questions, it will just be fuck off, fuck off. The the trick is... Um, you find someone in a big um, yellow tabard that's maybe 30, 40 metres away and you tell them to go and ask them. <laughs> See that person in the high-vis vest? Yeah, that's who you want to go and talk to. 
Yeah. Um, pe- peaches will tell you uh, if you ask him. This is the single most frustrating part of running an event. Is people coming up and asking these things, even though the answer is usually the same year on year, um, and that all the questions will either be answered in the warning orders or the commanders meeting or both. Oh, but the yet, amount of people who haven't read the, the bloody up. yeah. Um, as as we the... left the field, uh, we were getting vehicles off Temple Coombe last year. Literally, he put uh, put over the tannoy. Um, because of the ground conditions, and to make this as smooth as possible, can vehicles leave by this exit and not this one? Um, for, for such and such reasons, thank you, uh, over and out, and closed it. And I'm not kidding, I was sat in living history watching. Not No sooner had he clicked the off on his tannoy uh, link than someone came up and asked him about the exact fucking thing he had just said. Oh, my God. And I I can understand why he moved to fucking Germany. <laughs> Insert Picard face palm. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> So, as I said, I apologise to um, any event organisers in who happen to listen to this, because as soon as they start hearing what time is the battle, where it's it's just fucking Vietnam noises. Um, Holger Brontolf Alsmeyer, I think, is the <laughs> way to pronounce that. Uh, if, if edible lamellars were a thing, what would yours be made out of? Beef jerky. Hey, noise! I see yeah. you are a man of culture as well. I honestly, without, I, I saw this question earlier, and instantly my thought was Cowley's um, jerky. Oh, ah, Cowley's edible lamina! Stuff. I'm an edible mailman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but gummy rings don't count. Mailman, mailman, just works perfectly. Is that, the same, is, is that perfectly the same well. like how they make edible underwear? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Bunch of pubes in your teeth. No, not for me. Oh, no, man. I would you... have that made out of three war bands of England salt. <laughs> Ooh. Ho, ho. Tasty. The jerky oh, actually, there we go. That's the official answer, then, isn't it? Jer- salt. Jerky made salt. from shit reenactors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the cow- flesh. Cow- um, Actually, my my brittle pony would be the uh, the the one. Of- <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one is nice. Sorry, just That's the name t- of that. Uh, it, uh, oh, they actually, they actually it, got a lot of shit off vegans for that. Oh, yeah, that's fucking go- hilarious. Oh, oh, That's how I heard of Cowley's actually. On honestly, going after a small business like Cowley's, um, who offer quite a wide variety of vegan alternatives, um, is. You know, that is very much shitting on your doorstep with regards to uh, protesting, honestly. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, his I'm, I'm not a fan of vegan stuff, I can't deny. But holy crap, his is good. Yeah, like, you know, you, you, to pick on such a small business um, who are making the effort, even though it may, you know, that's that can sometimes not be a cost-effective thing for such a small business to venture into, yeah, that that was just a shit show, honestly. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I that's why I'm quite happy to plug his name here because uh, that his his stuff is damn good quality. Absolutely. And he's, you know, to be fair, him and his lady are very nice people. Like, if I spot them at an event, even if I'm not going to buy anything, I'll still drop in to just have a wee chat with them. Yeah. You know what? I think I'm. There are a lot of nice traders now. Right. I fancy some of their jerky. I'm going to put in the next question. Yep. Before we move away from Cody, I've got one idea. If he's listening, make Lamla plate shaped jerky. No, please. Oh, yeah. No, because somebody will buy it and wear it and say it's authentic. (laughs) (laughs) If they made their head head jerky, they wouldn't have done it. Only people as short as you, just these (laughs) two. That's just um, harsh. You can't make fun of other people's height like that, Tom. Not mm. big and it's not clever. <laughs> you've let your me down, you've let your school down, and you've let yourself down. <laughs> uh, 
Nick, uh, Nicky Edwards, <laughs> moving swiftly on, asks, what's the biggest animal you could knack in a fight, armed or unarmed? Um, Berries. That's a good question. I I reckon I could take a particularly big dog, um, but I ha- my, my uncle owns a uh, something called a cane corso, which is an Italian breed of mass. Um and his his previous one got to thirteen, and I was very glad that it was like Scooby Doo friendly. Like it was just ridiculous. <laughs> but he has a new one, um, a younger uh, bitch that is not quite as big as his previous, but she's very wary with strangers, and ah. that th- you you get that. It's in that moment where you see a dog that maybe weighs eleven to twelve stone, that it do- it's sizing you up, and you're you f- certainly feel like you're going to come out second in that contest. So pe- people obviously have this inflated idea of what what they could fight. Like some people go, "Oh yeah, I'd punch a bear or I'd strangle a shark." It doesn't take much more than a, I guess, ten to eleven stone of mastiff to take us down i mean they I were used for exactly that by the romans in the question as well it says armed or unarmed i think that actually is a massive factor like yeah, if absolutely. i'm armed with a spear i could possibly take down quite a large animal if yeah. i'm armed with nothing then i could take down maybe a dog <laughs> if i'm armed with a nuke i can take down anywhere that is like, a Chernobyl. like yeah. unarmed i feel like it would be anything i could throw <laughs> yeah, if, if I was uh, armed with a you know an emplaced machine, um, <laughs> I, I, I could, I could uh, <laughs> utterly ruin the um, the local ecosystem. But if I yeah, man, like, if I was armed with an exterminatus uh, planet destroying <laughs> um, gun, then I could just destroy any mammal. If I, had if I was armed here. with a Huey and a uh, minigun, I could probably take out 30 to 50 feral hogs. <laughs> what, about, what about talking trees? Flashback. Trees. See, th- this is like um, that whole... <laughs> What's that simulator online? Like, how could you oh, take um, it? Oh, is this... Oh. Um... Wait, which one's this, sorry? Like one of the little um, 2D flash games. Yeah. Where oh. the further you got, the more weapons you got and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember what you know, like, now. How, how many weasels could you kick the face off before you were overwhelmed by sheer numbers? It'd probably yeah. take in the triple digits to overwhelm me. <laughs> but I'd probably only realistically take out uh, I weasels. I think the, the reality maybe 50? of... Where I'd be would be more of a wake up call. Like, the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> what? Why what? am I strangling a stoat? <laughs> like that Skyrim quest. Oh yeah, we have to kill like <laughs> like the massive mud crab and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, as well, does it include kills when you fall over and crush the small things? <laughs> yeah, because that is a valid tactic. Is if you've got things clinging to you, is to drop what, and roll. Doing the like Spanish a horse. archer on a fucking cat. Atomic <laughs> elbow <laughs> on a rope. Yeah. Okay. So let, <laughs> veering like into very gleeful animal abuse. So we're we gonna like move on slightly. Um, on the subject of animals, and I think this is kind of a a very i think this person might have been high at the time but Brittany ann jordan asks wouldn't it be terrifying if a frog ran instead of hopped now i think yes. we've all seen the meme yes. you know plap 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 and let me let me just let me just pose a different alternative to you yeah okay maybe it'd be more terrifying if a frog ra- frog ran instead of hopped but just be glad they don't do the same thing as flying squirrels Oh, yeah. Just glide into your face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, look at that squirrel. Oh, God, it's in my face! <laughs> it, it'd be like, like the sensation of a, a, a slightly sweaty pair of testicles. <laughs> your You'd know all about I was, more thinking, I was more thinking a really dense, um, like, um, oh, fuck, what's the word? Um, 
you a hand towel, a, a really dense hand towel that's just really oh, wet, yeah. slapping you in the that. face. Yeah, the Arabian goggles. Um, <laughs> One over each side of your nose. Um, Rick Flashheart asks, and this is quite a sensible one after the previous <laughs> selection. Events that treat you and actors like shit, why do we all trek there still every year? Discuss. Follow on questions. Uh, what amenities and provision for the reenactors makes a good client? Just through good toilets. And, yeah, a good toilet. <laughs> Guthrum, what are your thoughts? Oh, I think it's because reenactors are a bunch of masochists. Yeah. Mm. No, for real though. Um, a lot of the events that treat reenactors like shit, from what I understand, it's because they are big, important events that lots of people go to anyways. So they can afford to treat people like shit. Yeah, because yeah. they know they'll well. still get people come. <laughs> and naming no names, the the thing is with big events, lots of people, individuals don't normally get to see will rock up. Um, so, for example, let's say a really big event uh, that uh, Shia Reeve and Toby have come to. I don't see you guys nearly often enough. Um, and I will go there if even if the the organisers are literally Satan. Yeah, just to be good with mates. mates. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that goes back with uh, what we were saying in response to Ted's comment uh, question. Even. I think it's quite a similar question. I think this is just more sort of if an event is shit, mm. yeah, or if, or if the organisation behind it. I, I think um, we were talking about Deppling before, and that's a, that's I think an example of an event that's quite big, but still quite personal. Like mm. the the guys the the head um what's the word Marshals. marshal he will always come around and like check on everyone like you will see him maybe twice three times in the weekend personally um which is I really think, nice I think the clients reenactors are very good at several things um, one of them being able to look after their own and be mm. quite self reliant. Uh, if there's no wood available, we will just sneak off and cut some wood down. Um, you, you I really... think you mean we will go and buy it from a near where hard, nearby hardware mm, We just store found it. Mm. For legal of reasons, course. this is a joke. For legal reasons, <laughs> that's <laughs> a joke. Yes. Um, but we, we will be able, you know, to sort ourselves out, even if we are provided with nothing, um, and even if we're slightly taken for granted in that regard. We do have a breaking point, though. Um, th there used to be an event near Tintagel called Slaughter Bridge, and not content with a bunch of people who turned up and fought all day for free, uh, the, the person who owned the lands that it took place on wanted to start charging the reenactors to turn up and do the show. What? Uh, Fucked! Yeah, good. and that, yeah. that was very much the response he got, and now that event doesn't run anymore. Um, Funny how that works. Yeah, exactly. What a wanker. Oh, so, yeah, th there is a breaking point, um, but unless it's it's that bad, we Curb can your push... enthusiasm noise. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's really bad, we will push on, because yeah, bring, what, bring, we bring get a lot of hard. enjoyment out of what we do, and we still enjoy putting on the show. So you, you do have to treat us pretty shit to get us to leave, which will give you an indication of how shit you are treating I us. I think also, um, I think some shit shows have been brightened up by a member of the public saying, oh, that was really cool. Yeah. Or, or you know, any other kind of compliment from the public, I think, can turn what was a really shit day into not, not quite a shit. Mm. To be honest, um, again, with uh, who you spend time with in the evening as well can do that. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Like... Yeah. And also, I think as well, I mean, this isn't necessarily a, an organiser thing, but let's say, for example, um, the example we, we said earlier was um, Detling 20... 
2018, the really wet one. In the face of all this horrendous rain, this toxic wood and, and everything, the the group still banded together. We were all a community. So even if, even if you are all going through shit, you're going through shit together. Yeah, you, you can go through exponentially worse shit with be, you know good people. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if I had to do... I mean, be, and this is just purely on the basis of weather last year. If I had to do Hastings by on my Todd last year, <laughs> um, that would have been fucking misery. If, if I'd known maybe two or three people in other groups and just been there. Like, I still can't believe you were only ten. 10 metres or so from me down the line. <laughs> yeah. But yeah it, on, it, you were on the end of our line. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the second day my group went home. So. Um, I don't blame I, I them. Commanded with Regia. Um, and I did get a comment from the chap at the line. It's like, oh, ne- never thought I'd die with uh, um, you know, someone who wasn't in Regia. And I said, well, do, how about would you die side by side with Goat One Armband? He said, I, I could do that. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so, I, to, yeah. I mean, actually, last year's Detling is a prime example, though. It's like on the way down to it, uh, my car broke down about apparently 15 minutes away. Oh, do you mean Hastings? Uh, my... Yeah. What did I you say? You said Detling. Shit, I meant Hastings. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, uh, yeah, that broke down about 15 you, miles away. I had a ton of crap in the car, as well as taking one of the newer members down. And, yeah, by, by the time we got there Friday evening, I was actually on the verge of just saying, fuck it. I'm I'm just going to arrange to go straight home in the morning. And then that evening was like I still called it an early evening, but the evening really helped bring I back up the both mood. Evenings early. Well, yeah, I called both evenings early evenings. I went to sleep I think both of them were about 8 9 p.m. Um but I think it was Friday, no it was Saturday evening where um I went out with the one of the groups in Regia that I won't name. Um, I went out with them for a pub meal, and that was really nice. Um, I was going to do that until I got charged. Yeah, it was so much hundred, money it? for it. But yeah, like a hundred or something quid by police tow. The, yeah, well, it wasn't even a police tow as well because it was like, right, we've got to move you from where you are to the service station, which is literally three miles up the road at the top uh, of the hill the that Tesco I was at the bottom one? at. I don't remember any shop there. Um, oh, yeah, I think I know the one. Yeah. Uh, and then it was the same fucking towing company that the police had used who came and fucking towed me the rest of the way to Hastings. Seriously? Seriously. Uh, but because it was a police emergency tow, the first guy couldn't take me all the way. That's so... <laughs> uh, there goes our tax money. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've got two questions to go for uh, go through now. Um, one from Dan Clark. What's your real bra size? Not the one you post on Instagram. Well, we're all still in training bras, aren't we? <laughs> no, I'm definitely. You know, nobody else is going to answer it. What? What? Sorry. Come on, what? Tom. Answer the bra question. Come on. You'll cut out for me. What? Oh, that's his excuse. Oh, I've heard that. Uh, bold of you to assume I've been close enough to learn anything about bra sizes. Uh, Oof! Self-appreciation. <laughs> Self-burn, those are rare. Yeah. <laughs> not with me, they're not. Uh, the, the, the debate now is whether that kind of, you know, does that... Elevate you up or down in people's estimation? Oh, down, <laughs> down for sure. Depends what, what, what people's you... estimations already are, though. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think people think too high, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the rest of you? Has anyone, anyone got any advance? Go to Jim if you need a bra. Go to Jim. <laughs> Jokes on you. I don't have Instagram. <laughs> Well, I do, but I I don't use it. That was such a Jim bro 
answer just Eastern. Oh, I'm sorry. I do Eastern and I like to go to the gym and I ride a motorbike. I'm actually cool. It, it's a shame that, you know, it, you know, you should replace the protein shakes with miracle Grow, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's official. I want to challenge you to a Hell in a Cell match. Oh! <laughs> A what? Hell in the cell. Man, you got to brush up with your wrestling. They get in a big cage and oh, right, okay. hug each other a lot. No, I, I think I think you should play the bad game. <laughs> what, you never I heard of the bad game? In a sack. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not do, do you guys? knows. Toby knows the bad game. <laughs> do you guys know the bad game? Oh yes. Yeah. Is the that bench one? In yeah. The chest? Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, you two I, should I, play I, the I, bad game. That I, uh, would be super, fucking hilarious. We're super yeah. close, so no doubt we'll end up sparring at some point. Because I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I grouped, funny enough, we've trained. Well, we'll we'll be meeting up after lockdown at some point. Anyway. Yeah, this, yeah. This, make this it a pay per view. Like, I'm gonna step through the door and go, "Hey guys!" And he's just gonna punch me square in the face. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say punch me square in the face, but you know. Be square in the square in the waist. Yeah. <laughs> well, he could hit you in the face. His, his arm would just be at an angle of over forty-five degrees. <laughs> I can hear um, other people laughing in the background. Third parties are not accepted to laugh at me. <laughs> uh, so oh, man, just Ethan is so gonna murder me in my sleep. <laughs> It's it, it, that's just going to be the end of like you know we're going to do like a live studio um, recording and he's just going to go uh, Charlie Hebdo on us and just I just appear like I've got I've, I've gone to the bathroom and I just pop back but I've got a chair for each and every one of you <laughs> <laughs> so line up you see I for one wouldn't mind going through that so long as I had my li- like just to say, Listen, like just to we say get it. it we get it. You're deprived of your kink fantasies, okay? Fucking hell. <laughs> no kink uh, shaming, boy. But but but. Seriously, oh no, no kink shaming. Eyes. I'm just saying he's deprived. Brass eyes. I would say <coughs> we are all comfortable with our sizes. You're comfortable with your titties. Yeah, man. I just let it all hang out. Hmm. Yeah. Trying to fit that bearded biker look, isn't it? <laughs> How big has your belly been since you've been pregnant? Oh, growing in it. So we've got uh, one last question uh, from Katie Young, who asks if the only way to do events was as a member of the Free War Bands, which kind of blade would you take to your own throat? What are those nice Japanese kill themselves with? Whatever that is. What time um, is it? To commit noble well, there's the, yeah, there's yeah. the Well, there's the... There's the... There's the... It's either a wakazashi or a tanto that they use to commit seppuku by slicing their belly open. And then you have, like... If you have a best mate, he cuts your head off. And that's, like, you know, the greatest... It's like a high... Yeah. Do, yeah. Oh, well, it's I'd like, rather, give me a clean death. I would rather do that than join the Free World Bands of England. Mm. I'd probably I, do the I would... same, but with a gorgeous, properly done pattern worded sax, just despite it. <laughs> yeah. Even in even in death, he looked better than three war bands of England. You say that like it's hard. <laughs> I, 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 I'd do it. I'd do it with a blunt sax because that it's still less painful than joining them. Well, just bludgeon your head in. Yes. I think like I'm I might be the only one who's been to a relatively recent event where they were there. And everything we possibly think they do at an event is entirely true. Oh, everything <laughs> from, 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 from the shit as as the Tratu shit to healing brought in and every everything you can fucking imagine. The paint, biting stuff to make foam come in their mouth. Well, I, I'm You're sure not. they're well aware of us by now. I would love for us all to just go to one of their events. Can't. And I'm just not allowed sp- to. I speared that guy in his bloody chest and broke his rib. No, no, no. no. Not as reenactors. You have to delete that. Bit. I mean, as... <laughs> yeah. as me- 
I, I, I think we should go as members of the public, uh, incognito, uh, go one armband undercover, and what, just um, with, with big fucking group show marks, mustaches, and glasses. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know, yes. like those TV shows where the kids were on top of each other's shoulders. Oh no, we <laughs> should fi- we should film it like a mo- movie. we should film it like a mockumentary. Yes, a proper little hidden camera type one. Oh wow. Oh, that'd actually be amazing, though. No, um, I, 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 I can't understand why they're getting events. It, it befuddles me, uh, to be truthfully told. Because they're the most accurate Viking reenactment society there is. Oh, I've said up. this. It's just, it's just facts. Uh, to be honest, like the events that they do go to, it aren't anything to write home about. Um, I mean, they're the sort of events where there's like three tents and a ring. The idea and- that Sheringham is a contender for uh, against Jorvik is just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's the largest anyway. reenactment thing at this time <laughs> of year in the east, southeast, or west, or whatever the fuck. Like, you mean apart actually... from York, which is the same yeah, yeah, um, on the same fucking Tom, side of the country. Tom, you're from the east, southeast, west, or wherever the fuck now. That's where you're from. Great. Hey, people refuse to admit the Midlands exist. I refuse to admit the rest of the country exists. <laughs> I mean, out of curiosity, have any of you guys been to Bashio yet? Oh, uh, sharing them? No, whatever, whatever the fiery fucking sharing them, yeah. Is that sure. it? Is it? No, but I've got members uh, who have been there. Oh, okay. I'm just curious because it didn't actually look that big, and it looked like we had more people at Gipswick. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a tiny event. It look the photos make it look a lot larger, but it's not. It's it's like I say, it's probably the biggest event in the calendar. The for all the free war bands um, members, but it, <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's smaller than the smallest event in our calendars. Ah, oh, fair enough. Fair it's enough. it's it's really like it's it's big compared to the rest of the things they do, which are what we traditionally call dog and pony shows. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's kind of sad considering that the whole point of being under one umbrella was supposed to get them <laughs> to big events, like you know, w- without having to jump through the hoops of either joining the Vike or being guests of them. So that's that's the Q and A for this week, and hopefully that's been nice and entertaining and made up for the shortfall in previous episodes. Uh, before we move on to Farb of the week, uh, just a little announcement. Um, just Eastern Things has a mini Eastern Things on the way. Um, learns, yes, that's it. There, there is a future league member in the in the oven. So congratulations, my dude. That's that's solid news. Years of being stabbed in the bollocks by spears, and it's good to know they still work. (laughs) (laughs) I still still will wear groin protection. (laughs) Yeah, but it's worse. We're really far through, and and we're beyond the point where we could have found out if it's going to be a boy or a girl, but we've chosen not to. And that's respectable. I can't decide what's more terrifying having a, a daughter or having a miniature. Me, a mini you, like I, it's you're just a you then. I, th- I think yeah. they're, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Um, I can just imagine, like, as soon as it pops out the womb, <laughs> here's your first spear. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, yeah, appreciate that. I, it's, it, uh... It'll be the first time the doctor hands the father to the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking break a chair over your head so bad. <laughs> 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 to be fair though here as, is your um, eastern combat helmet <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though as a father of a little girl uh, I, I would say it's probably gonna it would be more scary to have a mini me than a female mini me mm. <laughs> to be fair I am t- she is obsessed with horses dinosaurs swords dragons unicorns so she she'd be a massive fan of Glory Hammer. Probably, yeah. Oh, actually, oh. yeah. She, she, we do have Glory Hammer on the car playlist often. <laughs> it's actually pretty awesome. She sings along to Sabaton and everything. Uh, also, um, victorious with things like dinosaur warfare. 
Yes, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, she, uh, when I find a decent uh, place, I've got it. She's getting introduced. To oh, uh, dinosaur right. warfare is so good. So we've had some good news just to pep us up and prime us for what comes next. Uh, now I'm afraid I'm going to have to upset you all um, and ask you to look at this week's Farb of the Week. Oh, God. Cast thine eyes yeah. upon that. Like, th- th- there's nothing right. Let- let's-, let's get that off the bat, shall we? There- there's nothing correct about anything that's being worn here. Uh, uh, the trousers, shield is the right shape. The trousers are passable, but yeah, everything else is... Eh. Even the tunic's too bright, really. It's bleak. Uh, it's, it's also... Um, it's also... And short. The fact he's able to roll the sleeves up um, means it's inauthentic. Yeah. It's, yeah. It means it won't be tailored. Probably. Although although in other ones, that's that's not too much of an issue. It's just that it's also bleached. It's it's like a triple whammy of... of I wouldn't be surprised um, if it's cotton as well. Yeah, oh, it's probably where, almost where I'm off the shelf. Um, his shoes actually seem all right. Uh, yeah, they, although they I would like, like to no toggles. I would like to point out pe- pe- to people that he is wearing uh, leather uh, leg wraps. I- I'm more impressed that he's leather wearing... leg wraps that match the armor. Yeah, yes. and he's wearing. It looks like the arm guards are the same yeah. as well. So I- mm. I'm I'm more impressed that he managed to find all three of them. And with the brain power, he's obviously lacking. Is this like the Infinity on? Stones? <laughs> <laughs> He just needs to get a helmet that matches. <laughs> I, actually, I, I actually used to have that helmet. And for all things, I've got to admit, it was fucking bombproof. Well, the helmet? Yes. Mm. Well, it's mean, still it's, it's, it's a, it's a, oh, yes, God, yeah, it's a piece of shit. But like, it was very well made. I'll give them that. Yeah. It's, it's a shame that they couldn't make it look anything like what it's supposed to. Mm. It's uh, Depeka, I believe. Oh, fuck. I, 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 I got mine from GDFB back when I started out, and as soon as I got it, I was told to blow it. Yeah. But yeah. to be fair, I never took it to an event, to be fair. It was um, all like training in that. Oh, his... see, what, what, that helmet is incredibly tough. I've hit someone on the head during Eastern and worn that helmet. They hmm. barely dented it. Just, yeah, yeah, we, we, crap. we, test, we tested mine with, um, I think it's one of Wheel and Fudge's maces, and it oh. barely left a dent. Yeah, Pro- yeah, probably fucking going for it as well. Mm. Probably giving it some Wally. Uh, and also, yeah, is fairly dense, genuine fairly question: dense. Is that fur actually fur? No, it that, looks that, like it looks like a, it looks like a skin. faux fur rug to me. Yeah, probably I the uh, the IKEA thing after Game of Thrones became. No, uh, no, because the IKEA ones are still they do actually look pretty good. A, to be fair, they're not yeah. in a perfect square. Like to that be fair, that's like a good point. Dead straight edges. You, you can't tell the IKEA ones are actually not real. But yeah, that's ah oh man. Also, um, you know what? Actually, of all things, the Thor hammers, the Thor's hammers, okay, but he's still a man. I can't actually see that hammer well enough to make. Yeah, it I don't know how accurate it is in itself. But it looks like the generic uh, yeah, it was about to say. Swedish uh, horse hammer. Well, like the skein one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I was going to say it looks more like the one you get from China for about two quid. Probably is. Probably, yeah. yeah. Like, if it's a very simple hammer, like the Repton, uh, the example from B- Berka, or even just a yeah. simple amber one. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we have evidence for oh. men having in certain contexts. Guys, I can answer um, a couple of things about a bit more about the tunic and the trousers, because you said that the trousers might be right. Looking at a side-on picture, um, the trousers have pockets, and they're clearly modern. Oh, oh, oh God. Uh, well, the thing is, if you, if you can hide the pockets, that's fine, but the fact you can see them is the problem. Oh. You, yeah. The reason you can see them is because there's a bloody great side split in the tube. Yeah, I, 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 I actually guessed this was one of the side so, split ones from the start. The side um, split isn't a bad thing. It's very early, isn't it? Uh, no, no, no. The V Borg example. Oh, fair. Split. Yeah, yeah, true. But, but that was designed to be tucked in, wasn't it? It is an undergarment that is tucked yeah. in. So, yeah. Um, and you could get away with just wearing an undergarment. 
I reckon, personally. Say you're you're working and it's damn so, hot. So yeah, I mean, for example, like um, yeah, exactly. Detling Detling last year, um, basically the whole of Regia was in shirt sleeve order. There we go. Um, but so I, I think that is. The shower. I think that's his general tunic. Yeah, yeah he, no, he going in, going into battle. No, no. Um, that, that axe looks like <sighs> wank. Yeah. Um, what is that? Shield... A bit of plate rolled into a tube. Yeah, the shield is missing um, rawhide on it. Which uh, look, shields go through wear and tear. Fair enough. But you maintain uh, them. Yeah, it's it's also too small for him. Um, yeah. You know that it should yeah. cover from your chin to above your knee, and he's a he's a big bloke. That's too small shield for him. Uh, he has the second axe in a loop on his belt, which is wrong. Oh my god, he does as well. Fuck's yeah, sake. a very shiny, modern-looking belt. That that armor bought the stock belt. from. Uh, oh, but goat one. He's a berserker. Berserker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is hideous. This is fucking hideous. Like, why is the, if, which group would allow this onto a well, field? Well, we know what, what group. Well, yeah, I, I was going to leave that for like you know an open-ended question, but that what self-acting authenticity officer or event organizer would allow that onto the field? Couldn't and free will bunch of England. Oh, but we yeah. just want to have fun. We're teaching the public about it, and it is what our ancestors. Now, if you're teaching born. the public about it, fucking teach them right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what our ancestors did. Yes. Then you start looking at it from a educational point of view. The onus is on you to get it right. Yeah. The, the yeah. thing with that as well, and we've touched up on it on every single episode. We do what he's wearing probably costs the exact same as it would be to go out and get half tidy kit. I'm yeah, pretty absolutely. sure those like those shitty leather armors. So if, he, if you com- yeah, if you combine the cost of the shitty leather armor, the shitty leather I'm actually leather, leather leg wraps, and for. the shitty leather braces, he could buy a good shirt of mail. Yeah, yeah. probably. And for maybe the cost of that mail. helmet, he, maybe not. But he, he could have bought a nice soft <laughs> kit, like we talked about. Like he could have bought a full set of soft kit. Mm. And well, maybe, to be fair as well, though, the cost of that armor. Bear with me. Uh, Shari, if you know it because you've seen the work in progress yourself, yeah, I'm not somebody with a hell of a lot of disposable income, but I am building good kit. And it's simply a case of accepting you're not going to go into your first show in warlord gear unless yeah. you've you build managed to over fall time. stupidly on your feet. Exactly. Like... My sword, which is based off a of find, um, that took me. Uh, I placed my order, and then it took me a couple of months to actually save up to be able to uh, pay for it. Yeah, it's Christ. How much is it? Uh, including the scabbard from a separate I think he means person, the level it's about oh the level lamb. Sorry, eighty-one euro. Just for the torso. Oh my god! Jesus! It's okay, epic uh, armory. You can actually uh, leather. You can, you can leather armor. Definitely get a butted set of mail for that. Oh, definitely. Would you remember we spoke about my tunic being made last week? Mm, all in yeah. all, with all that stuff, it's worked out to be like seventy. Yeah, right. yeah I've, yeah. I've got some more here for you, lads. Uh, uh, well, my so, my new bling tunic. Granted, I've provided all the material was sixty-five, I think, but I think it's. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, sixty-five. But you know, if if I hadn't provided the material, a a nice quality but not as blingy tunic would be about seventy-five, eighty-five, which is not bad at all. And to be honest, there's plenty of simple, easy to follow guides that even a complete novice to uh, pattern making and stuff like that. And there's enough people on all the various social media platforms as well, who, if you say, I'm following this pattern and I don't know what I'm meant to do here, who will turn around and help you. So I think yeah. this is it, the problem again. It comes back to, like, like you can people make a don't re- seek advice. Yeah, but like you could make a really good low-status tunic using just some cheap, pure, uh, cheap pure wool 
like about three meters worth find a decent pattern which isn't hard and you know yeah you put a bit of fucking time into it cutting it and all that lot but it fits you better than an off the peg one and it looks better than fucking that yeah oh Oh my god i've just realized what that shirt might be have you seen the facebook ads where they've got like the well, the wish quote ones. linen, yeah, the quote linen end quote shirts, which have got like this, like you know, the deep V neck with the lace up uh, collar, and no, then the little fucking Rostratu like... snowflake on it. Yeah, it is. Jesus, lads. The braces and the shin guards are also like thirty year old pop. So we're talking about 140 euros just on the leather bits. Um, yeah, it's leather that has no basis in history, yeah. Plus you can maybe 60, 70 quid on nice those axes. On it. Plus maybe 60, 70 quid on those axes. I know, I've seen axes like, I mean, because that's assuming that he brought them brand new as well and didn't get them uh, on a Facebook marketplace. So much pain. <laughs> All right, let's let's rate this fucker. Um, it's th- this is total shit, isn't it? Th- th- there's no redeeming stuff. There's no bits to improve. I think you just this need- is actually the worst one we've had so far. It is. We we just need to burn this kit and have this guy start from scratch. It's that bad. To be honest, I would love to set up a GoFundMe for people <laughs> who realise, you know what? Yeah, my kit is shit, but I don't know where to start. But we can just go look. We will buy you nice looking kit. Just stop wearing that. No. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. <laughs> Literally, any research, any research you would do online would tell you that every aspect of this is wrong. There is no excuse to be this shit. Uh, actually, he's honoring his ancestors, which makes it okay. Oh, fuck off. Right, on that note. <laughs> the evidence may not show it, but I feel it to be true. Oh, God. <laughs> there are some things you oh, do not oh. forget. Oh, shit, that one. Right. <laughs> Before we just end into total madness, um, that's it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. We need um, to rate. We need to rate. Oh, we need to rate. Yeah, oh, scratch that, scratch that. All right, what are we scoring it? Uh, Guthrum of Norvik. Unrateable. Wow. I cannot give him a rating. Uh, a <laughs> Just Eastern. I think he's, his entire kit's worth about as much as a toilet roll. And in fact, <laughs> his, his tunic looks like shit paper, so he can have. I know, in, in our current time, toilet roll's actually worth a lot more. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Sure. Um, you can get zero out of ten Tostitos this week. Shai Reeve, what are you giving? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, a slap in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toby, what's what's your verdict? Negative four. Must try harder. See me after class. <laughs> <laughs> your voice was perfect for that. Yes, yes, Mister Jones. <laughs> uh, for me, that is a solid mouthful of salt. Um, that, Wait, that... where'd that Brazers logo come from? <laughs> right, on that note, thank you for tu- tuning in this week. Um, our special guest has been Toby Dones. If you'd like to join us in the future, sign on to the Patreon. Um, even the smallest amount, uh, the smallest tier, will get you in to be able to be a guest. Uh, and there, there are, of course, many benefits beside. Uh, but it is a goodbye from myself. From Guthrum of Norvik, Just Eastern Things, The Shire Reeve, and this week, Toby Dones. Thank you very much for tuning in, and goodbye. Cheerio, lads. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sir, if such roast and if we are free, we must never wear for sick. If as that near, we're great, so slash great, so if such and plus newest, the image of me enough, he gives so, but sick, but get gifts, sir, yes, no, I would yield now, gift, no, this never wear for the drop, do a slow man. I have met the other, her venue, we never run off, but get away.